<laughs> no, it's down to one little battery part. Hope it lasts. Hey, my name is Jeremy. Storm is down here. And this will be 365 day devotional from Max Lucado's book. God is with you every day. It is a devotional book. Devotional um to say your prayers. To prayers in the morning or whenever but it's a book that will lead you on a a message for today that is scripturally based that's pretty good so it'll be a message of inspiration and encouragement but the biggest part is that it's scripturally based which in itself is inspiration and encouragement but bigger than that it is the word of god it is the truths and promises and the story the history of God and who he is and what he's like and then and then when the new covenant came when uh the Messiah came when Jesus came the new covenant came then we tells the Bible tells us the New Testament tells us how Jesus is and then Jesus told us how he is but how his father is if you know me you know my father <laughs> we try to emulate our father just like uh Jesus is a uh, obedient to the very end but uh He's uh, obedient to whatever his father tells him to do. So it's pretty cool. So cool. This 365 day devotional it is titled Where You Came From. It is from Luke 19.10. Stormy is back with us. She'll let us have our book. Come on, Stormy. All right. Where You Came From. For the Son. Uh oh. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. Luke 19.10. We need to know where we came from. Knowing connects us, links us, bonds us to something greater than we are. Knowing reminds us that we aren't floating on isolated ponds, but on a grand river. That's why God wants you to know his story. Frank photos hang in his house. Lively talks await you at his table. A scrapbook sits in his living room brimming with stories. Stories about Bethlehem, beginnings, and a manger miracle. Enemy warfare in the wilderness and fishermen friends in Galilee. The stumbles of Peter, the stubbornness of Paul. All a part of the story. But they are all subplots to the central message. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John 3.16 this is the headline of the story. God saves his people. He cast his net over cities and individuals, princes and paupers, the Pontius Pilots of power, and the Peters, Jameses, Johns of the fishing villages. God takes on the whole mess of us and cleans us up. The quest is God's story, and you are part of it. That is uh, where you came from. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Luke 19.10 We get to participate in the story God. Story of God. Of what his plan and purpose on this earth. Ever since the beginning of time to right now. His plan will always be fulfilled because he is perfect. He, God is perfect and perfect plan. Um, uh, yeah. So not everything. I mean, he, the god of the air, uh, Satan, is here. The, the enemy is here to kill, to steal, and destroy, and looking for somebody to devour. But uh, the Bible calls him the uh, the Lord of the air, uh, if you will. Uh, God's control of everything, but he'll he'll allow. He won't allow certain things to happen, but allow other things to happen. Uh, the testing of our faith, possibly. I don't know, but we won't get into that. You know? out of the scope of this devotional Luke 19 we'll read from Luke 19 still cool that we're hanging out in Luke because Luke's super important to the Christmas season um, we'll go the triumphal entry Luke 19 28 actually yeah after Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. Hmm. Actually, we'll start. Wow. You know what? There's so much good stuff. I just, 19 is kind of long, but I'll do it. The parable of the ten minas. While they were listening to this, he went on to tell them a parable because he was near Jerusalem and the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. He said, a man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then to return. So he called ten of his servants and gave them ten minas, 
but this money to put this money to work, he said, until I come back. But his subjects hated him and sent a, a delegation after him to say, we don't want this man to be our king. He was made king, however, and returned home. Then he sent for the servants to whom he had given the money in order to find out what they had gained with it. The first one came and said, Sir, your minnow was earned, has earned ten more. Well done, my good servant. His master replied, Because you have been trustworthy in very small matter, take charge of ten cities. The second came and said, Sir, your minnow minna has earned five more minnows. His master answered, You take charge of five cities. Then another servant came and said, Sir, here is your minna. I have kept it and laid away in a piece of cloth. I was afraid of you because you are a hard man. You take out what you did not put in and reap what you did not sow. His master replied, I will judge you by your own words, you wicked servant. You knew, did you, that I am a hard man taking out what I did not put in and reap what I did not sow. Why then didn't you put my money on deposit so that when I came back I could have collected it with interest? Then he said to those standing by, Take his minute away from him and give it to the one who has ten minutes. Sir, they said, he already has ten. He replied, I tell you, I tell you that to everyone who has, more will be given. But as for the one who has nothing, even what he has will be taken away. But those enemies of mine who did not want me to be king over them, bring them here and kill them in front of me. Uh. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem as he approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives. He sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Unite it and untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks, Why are you untying it? Tell them, The Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it, just as he had told them, as they were untying the colt. Its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They replied, The Lord needs it. <laughs> Simple as that. They brought it to Jesus, threw the cloak of the coat and on the coat, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they kept keep quiet, the stones will cry out. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, If you, even you, had only known of this day what would bring you peace, your peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. And finally, Jesus at the temple then he entered the temple area and began driving out those who were selling. It is written, he said to them, My house will be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. Every day he was teaching at the temple, but the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the leaders among the people were trying to kill him, yet they could not find any way to do it because all the people hung on his words. Luke 19, pretty much all of it, pretty awesome. Word of God, truths and promises of God, and uh, Father God, and then what Jesus says, and uh, pretty cool. And how how the people of that time rejected Jesus, just like his parable, how they rejected the king, and they didn't use their gifts and their talents, kind of the parable of the gifts and talents in Luke 19. So that'll be a big deal. For those that have much more will be given. For those that don't have much... Um, yeah, that'll still be taken away. So, remembering that. But 
I'm bigger on the gifts and the talents. If you do not invest those 10, the 5, or the 1, it will be taken away from you. If you invest just that one gift that you were given, that one minus, it will be multiplied. It will gain interest, and then that will compound, and that will compound, and that will compound. If you bury it, if you bury it, it can't, it can't earn interest. Nobody will see it. It can't help anyway. It can't serve anyway. Sorry. So that's the same way we are with our gifts and our talents. Remember it is God's plan and purpose for our life. His will, not our will. Uh, everything is according to His plan and His will for our life. We can certainly pray about things that we want. But remember that God is a good, 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 good Father. Remember God is holy, holy, holy. All knowing controls everything. Already made everything and controls everything. So he, since being a good father, he knows what is good for you, what you need, not what you necessarily want. However, he will bless you with the desires of your heart because he knows the deepest desires of your heart and what you really, really, really want and what you, of course, need. So uh, the perfect, the perfect gift. And he did know that we all needed his son to come down here. The perfect the perfect virgin birth, the perfect sinless man to come and walk among us to be an example on how to live a righteous, holy, honorable life pleasing to his father. Yep, and to uh, to teach us, to be a great teacher and a counselor, but more than that, more than that, he was God in the flesh. He was the word and the word became flesh and <laughs> it's pretty awesome. So, but what happened? The biggest part, the most significant part was what had to happen uh, according to God's plan. Because of what was going on in the world, how so many people strayed away and rebelled from God, Jesus was sent here to, to teach, live the perfect life, and to uh, do many other things to heal people, do miracles, and, and hopefully that would get people's attention, which it certainly got people's attention. Uh, but that was to bring people to, into God's kingdom to save people, to save people. Uh, through Christ we're saved by faith, so it's uh, pretty awesome. But he died on the cross. He died a terrible death on the cross, but, but his by his blood, by his body being broken, we are saved. We are saved, we are cleansed, we are forgiven, Miss Stormy. So remembering that, he was resurrected three days, and he is the new covenant, covenant, he is all love. He is here for us. He is with us every day. He leaves us the Holy Spirit. So it will be the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is with us. That leads us. And we can be in such a close relationship with God. Only if we pursued it fervently as much as He wants us to pursue it. It's there for the taking. It's ours. Uh, yeah. So pretty awesome stuff. Um, yeah. So remember that, be in prayer. Devotional books are very helpful. So Christmas is coming. Um, if you have a person, non-Christian or Christian, um, devotional books are pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Just get somebody reading something other than just watching watching uh, TV or senseless stuff or uh, senseless stuff or even too much sports that does not benefit. Um, it may or may not, it won't benefit us or God's kingdom unless we are gifted in that area, that arena, uh, to glorify God's kingdom somehow in sport, sport or business or whatever it is. So, okay, so business or medical. We have to find out what our gift are, is, our gifts and our talents, and use them. If something does not benefit us, benefit God's kingdom, probably get rid of it out of the life. So. Every day we have an opportunity to get so, so close to God. And how to see God is through prayer, through the Word of God, but it's through His children, His people. If you want to get a lot of Jesus, get around a lot of Christians that have the Holy Spirit. And then the body of Christ, all of it gets together and you start to see Jesus through all of them and how He works and what He is doing. Because He's, uh, he's in all of us. Yeah. So cool. And he wants to work through us. And uh, yep. Yeah, and we want to work for him just to glorify his kingdom because because he loved us so much, he sent his only begotten son to die for us. To die for us. So we shouldn't perish but have eternal life. Right? 
And because He died for us, He forgave us, He served, we do the same things. So, remember the first two commandments that Jesus told us to remember that are the most important is loving God and then loving people. Unconditional love, right? Cool. All right, we got that. And to be in prayer, and He teaches us how to pray. It's very, very simple. Um, yeah, hallowed be your name and kingdom come, your will be done. Forgive us, right? All those things and give us what we need, our daily bread, but forgive us of our trespassers and so we can forgive other people too. So this is going to be huge during the holiday season, but it's to remember that, to remember Christ and what he did for us. Forgive people of their trespasses. Pray for that you get to just get your needs met today, right? And you want his kingdom to come here as in... Uh, as in heaven, you want the same thing on earth, right? And for some of us, it's quite like that. Mike knows that. We've seen it. We've seen the dark side. We've seen the awesome side. But we've still seen God and see how he works. And we know that he works all things for good. So if you're going through something right now, he's going to glorify. He's going to be glorified somehow. Or he's going to use it to save you and save your family. To actually truly save. To take you from death to life. And... Uh, and without without Christ, without Jesus, he does have a plan and purpose, but it's not going to be an easy road, and uh, it won't be perfect, because I do believe Wyatt said it the other day, he said, well, nobody's perfect, uh, what is he, the 11 year old call, uh, he said, nobody's perfect except Jesus, but I said, we're supposed to meet that standard, bro, we're supposed to do everything we can to meet that standard, because that's what, that's what the Father God, and we're obedient to the very last drop right because jesus was there's no reason not to be right hmm. ah you just pick and choose what you want to do and make god your own type of god it's not the way it works he says exactly who he is and what he wants to do um cool all right be in prayer be in the word of god stay focused on the cross don't look left don't look right stay super focused um i would hope if somebody goes to therapy uh, that they would say the same thing uh, It is a, a belief It is a belief that billions of people Across the world have in Christianity And Jesus the Messiah uh, But if they focus on the cross First and foremost Love God and love people Everything else will fall into place I would hope that that's how people Counsel people uh, Yeah. So seek God and his kingdom First and all things will be added to you yeah, his kingdom, his